Hey, Time Slicers. Welcome to Slice Squad Spills. I'm your host, Nikki Wildflower. I went from a basement apartment to a multiple seven-figure empire. Now I'm here to share how you can do it too. Hello, and welcome to Slice Squad Spills. We are here, in here, <laughs> out here, existing. I don't know. Like, Good morning. I feel like I'm just not prepared in the slightest bit to do this, but fuck it, right? Today, I'm here with Jackie. This is Nikki Wildflower, the person who, yeah, the the host of the show, of this show that you decided to watch today, listen to, not watch. Holy Hannah. And I'm here with Jackie. Girl. No, I'm not redoing it. Like, you just have to roll with it. Okay. Done is, Hi. Done is better than perfect, you know? Right. Don't overthink it. Just say the words and move on. Yeah. All right. So last week or the last episode that we did, we talked about client retention, that client experience, what it looks like to you, like what it looks like for the client to be going through your services from the second they book to before they book to the second they book to after to what after they leave and ongoing and ongoing and talked about how to really maximize that experience so that your retention is higher and the lifetime value of each client is higher. Now this week, while we're still on this business building blueprint journey, um, I think we have like probably three more episodes of this particular season, this being one of them, we're going to actually dive more into two things that are really super easy to help build your business, okay? And get more clients. One, referrals. Two, reviews. Sounds really simple. And it is, but most people just, don't do it is the thing. I would say so. Yeah. So here's the deal. The most brilliant thing that I have ever seen done with reviews. And it shaped a lot of it shaped my experience. So I've told this story before and I'm telling it again. I don't give a shit. My dentist, I was looking for a dentist. Listen, like I have had really bad experiences with dentists. I don't even think I've ever told you guys this, but like I legit almost croaked like 13 years ago because my tooth went crazy and it attacked the inside of my face and it ate through my bone. And it was because a dentist left an infected root in there when they did a root canal. So like, and everyone's like, oh, medical malpractice. Well, guess what? My body decided not to have any fucks about it until four years later. So like that would be beyond the time. So four years later, my body is like, decides to be like, hey, I know you've been chilling in here this whole time, but like, we don't like it anymore. So we're going to infect your bloodstream now. No, wait. Well, the that sepsis. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it go up into your bloodstream, like the infection? Is into your, my oh, no, bone. into your sinuses. My bone. Yeah. It was osteomyelitis. So crazy. It was just like. It was scary as shit, guys. Yeah, it was. So it was just like, hey, I don't want to be in here anymore. Get me out. And then it like attacked my face and it was trying to get out this root, this infected root, but like it had nowhere to go. So it decided this is like, I should have like, this is so gory. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, trigger warning. Uh, I'm going to talk about of... something a little weird medically. Um, and then it decided it had nowhere to go. So it ate through the bones in my face. Like, how crazy is that? And then I had to be on. Um, thank you. Sorry. Joe brought me espresso in, in one of grandma's little Italy cups. That's cute. Little, I wish I, I got espresso. Yeah. I hope I can find my way back on track now. Um Anyways, so, so it ate through her face. It ate through her my face. Her face was swollen like this big. It was really well, scary. People she can't was in the see. Hospital. So just let's just say that it was a big face, big scary face. It was a big swollen face. <laughs> and this is not relevant at all, just so we know. But now that, but it's a fun story, so I'll tell it. It's not fun in the sense it's super that, like, fun. it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't fun, but it's like one of those things at the time. But it's one of those things that's like, okay, how fun is it to tell now, though? Right. What what a journey we went through. We survived. Yeah. So so it ate through the bones in my face and it infected the bones, obviously, because it ate through it. And then I had to be on like IV antibiotics and I had like a bunch of surgeries and my jaw is still a little effed up. So like when people are like, hey, um, do, why do you talk like only on one side of your mouth? And I'm like, because I can only talk on one side of my mouth. Thank you very much. Um don't really thanks for pointing that out thanks for pointing that out i don't really care but besides that so obviously there's some shit with dental stuff so when i was looking for a dentist i was like extremely particular when i moved back to new york i was extremely particular about finding a dentist because i'm like obviously i've been through it i can't be messing around and 
I just looked like everywhere. And then I found the place, obviously, with like the best reviews. And I went there because it had so many good reviews. And I went and what they had. And listen, it was an incredible experience. Like it was the most pain free dental experience I've ever had. But I while I was there, I realized how they had gotten so many of those reviews. Yes, they were super friendly. They've never been to a friendlier office. So they deserve the positive reviews. Yes, they, the dentists were great. Everybody was awesome. It was clean. They had they had beverages, you know, the whole nine. It was like going into almost they like gave you the client experience. They gave the whole experience, but they had this table and it had gifts there, like books, like good books and like fun things. And it was like, hey, if you had an amazing experience today and like, I don't even know if this is legal everywhere. So don't do this unless you know that it is. And it was like, hey, if you had an amazing experience today, feel free to write a review and take home a Prezi. I think if you're giving a gift, like it's just like, well, you probably got to be careful with that wording. So not like leave a review and you get this gift as a no, payback. What's the, it's like, there's got to be, a, there, is a there a loophole? Or, there, it is. The loophole is like the wording probably. It's like, you got to keep the wording very gray. Yeah. Like it can't be very specific. So it's like, <laughs> it's not a gift for the review, but it's like, if you take a book, maybe consider it. If it, yeah, so it's more like take a book, but you would be an asshole if you didn't leave a review and you took right. a book. So yeah, th- so so that was that. So I got my book. I never did read it, but I did get the book. I was so excited. I was like, I will write a review for a book. It was like a journal or something. And so fun. And I love that. yeah, I wrote the review and I was like, that's how they do it. And I thought it was so brilliant because I'm like, okay, I'm lazy. But if I do it right here and now, I'll actually write the review. And right. I'll take my book and I won't feel bad about it because there's also that law of reciprocity. Like I got a, I got a present. Now I got to give you a present. Right. I owe you something. That's how the human right. brain works. So I just thought it was brilliant and something you might want to consider. Yeah. Putting like little, sa- if you make your own retail, maybe that's a double win because you could put like a little, little, create little small free sample versions of the retail that you make, put it in a little bag, Put your QR code to your Google page or wherever you have most of your reviews. I recommend Google reviews um, because I find that a lot of people, when they are like moving to a new space or looking for a new um, service provider in any field, they might go to Google. And that's literally based off of anecdotal evidence. And that's what I personally do is I like Google spa near me or hair stylist near me. I also browse on Instagram. So I think it depends what I think that it depends what channel you're really focusing on, because like for someone like me who puts zero into SEOs, like and it is extremely social media focused, it's going to make more sense to have Facebook reviews than Google reviews. So it really depends. Like I always recommend, like, choose one channel that you're really going to go hard on. And that's the channel where you would want the reviews. So if mm-hmm. if you are heavily SEO focused, then make it Google. If you are more mm-hmm. social media focused in the way that you attain new clients, then get Facebook reviews. So Instagram, mm-hmm. there isn't. Though you can share, you, no, there's though you can share reviews, social proof is important. And social proof is not just reviews, you guys. Like, yes, that's important. And people are going to read those. But other forms of social proof are, and and these are really like, so I just talked about the law of reciprocity. When somebody gives you something, you are, you inevitably want to do something for them as well. When you see other people like, think about this. If you, if you see a viral video and you click on that person's page and they have like 500 followers and they're like, oh, it was a fluke. You don't really even care to follow them. You're like, oh, they got they they are they're having their 15 minutes of fame. I'm not it's not going anywhere. I'm going to move on. Then same thing happens with a different creator and you see that they already have a lot of followers. You're like, oh, other people like them, too. Right. You want to know. Wait, really quick. Have you ever heard of the research they've done around the fact that like human beings are literally like herd animals were like sheep and that's why people are always like, you hashtag sheeple, you know, because we're like sheep. Yeah, we follow like, each other. I am. So without even wanting to. <laughs> so, I'm a sheep. It's like a subconscious thing. But um, if they've done studies on this, like if one car parks at like the very back of the parking lot, even though everyone's parked at the front of the parking lot, innately, like one other person is going to park at the back 
like subconsciously like, oh, someone else is here. They're going to park next to that guy. And then so on and so forth until a lot of people are filling up the back of the lot for no reason, even with available spaces in the front. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's, anyway. it's really so true. But yeah, think yeah. think about that. I'm not saying you need to have a lot of followers, but like, I'm just saying people do what other people do. They like what other people like. You know, you're so right about that. And sometimes I think that I could like, and I know this about humans. And so when I see a bunch of people going left, I think that I'm like, I'm going to go right. I'm going to go right. Yeah. I'm going to do the opposite of what other people are doing. I think, yeah. I think I'm like cheating the system by doing that. I'm just like, right. my brain wants to go that way. And everybody else is. So the way that my brain tells me I should go, I go the opposite because I think everybody else's brain said the same thing. That is literally the most neurodivergent thing I've probably ever heard in my life. Uh, just saying. But there's logic to it, don't you think? <laughs> I guess so. But it's so like, over. it's like such an overanalyzation. I like it. My brain works in a similar way. I like yeah, You're, that's a thought on t that's like some thought inception right there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I oh, <laughs> really... Why do I have to go places like that? I just do. But anyway, anyway, next thing's next. So social proof, it could mean reviews, but it can also mean client like success stories. And when I say social proof, too, I mean, like in your content, walk people through a story like this person, this was going on. People want to relate. So if they can feel related to, it will help them. Like watch this person's success story. Their hair go from this to this in two hours. Um, Tell a little story behind it. That's all social proof. All things that prove that you are who you say you are. Even like having your clients that love you, right? And have been seeing you and successfully like receiving what they asked for from you for a while. Asking them or just like planting the seed of them to engage in your content. That's social proof as well, that other people are commenting on your posts that are your clients, right? Anything, any sort of engagement from your clients is social proof. Them sharing photos of themselves or like, yeah, photos of themselves after the service, before the service um, in your space and tagging you. Great. Social proof. You're actually working with clients. You are who you say you are. And they're happy, right? Builds another layer of trust. Yeah, 100%. That makes sense. The other thing beyond this, beyond the social proof and beyond reviews is something super obvious where we're also going to be getting our clients involved. Referrals. Most people don't get referrals and they don't utilize referrals. Well, they'll be like, oh, yeah, no, some of my clients do send me referrals. And I'm like, cool. Yeah, like it's, it's kind of word of mouth. And I do hand them out referral cards. I'm like, yeah, and they lose them in their bag. Like, what do you, like, right. you want to know what I do when someone hands me a referral card? And it's not like an asshole thing to do. It's just like, the fuck am I going to do with this? I put it in my bag. But if they were... If anyone hands me any piece of paper, I your, put it in my wallet and I never remember. Your slice of paper is going into recycling when I inevitably yeah. <laughs> empty out this doom, this bag of doom. It's down yeah, there. In it like is now, a year. It's yeah. now down there with my gum wrappers. So, and like <laughs> my chewed up pieces of gum that I have nowhere to put. Oh my God. It's with the dirty tissue at the bottom of my pocketbook. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. But it's just, it's, we don't use, we, it's not the way. Let's talk about the way. The way <laughs> would be, but, but like people do it. They're like, oh, should I do like loyalty cards where people like hole punch them and stuff? I'm like, no, we've moved on. It's 2024. Almost 2025 even. Like we got to stop yeah. with the paper. I mean, I like paper, but I'm going to lose it. And so are they. Bad for the environment, first of all. Second of all, we're in a digital age. And also, so. it's just too easy. Like, you you think, okay, I'm going to hand this person a card and they're actually going to refer somebody because you said they're going to get $10 off their next effing haircut. First of all, that's not, that's not even, like, enough. Second of all, you should be doing, like, a double-sided referral. Number three, I don't even know what number I'm on. What you should be doing, which most people are afraid to do, is asking clients to actually make an intro for you. So I love, here's the cool thing about referrals. They're, the lifetime value of a referral is higher. There's already some automatic trust there. They are way more likely to actually become a client because there is that automatic trust there. And they're more inclined to actually like you so, and mm -hmm. stay longer and enjoy your services because we are those herd animals. We are. We, we like what other people like. We want to like what other people like. So right. 
unless you're like me and everyone else goes left and you're like, right. Unless you're really overthinking it, which you shouldn't. (laughs) And so what you want to do is actually like right when, and the best time to ask for referral is like right when they've gotten some kind of a win, some kind of return, like they're super excited about it. So like you do a huge transformation or you just finish their service and they're super hyped about it. And you say, Hey, like, how did you, I'm really open to feedback. How did you enjoy the service today? And they're like, it was incredible. Cool. Like, what did you love most about it? And they're like, well, I love, like, I look like a rock star and you did it so fast. Cool. You look like a rock star. I love that. Who else do you know that wants to look like a rock star? Yeah. Who else do you know? Not do you know anyone else? Who else do you know? We should pause here for a second because this is this is innately the way that there, of course, is fear of rejection. We are human beings. And asking up front for someone to send you somebody else can cause fear of rejection just innately in your being, even if you're like, I'm not afraid of that. It's like, just check in with your, yourself for a second. Like, Wu Sa, just step into that conversation with your full chest. Here are two different ways that you can go about this approach. Here's the like, I'm afraid to be rejected sort of sort of way to go about it. Hey, so um, I'm accepting new clients and you're great. So like, if you know anyone who might want to come in, just send them my way. I have a referral program. Did you know? Oh my God, great. that sounds like everybody who's ever asked me for a referral ever. Yeah, yeah. If you And same thing with the pre-book. If you want to. Um, you could totally book I your could, next uh, one. Yeah, we could. Yeah, but it's totally up to you. It's like. Say it with your fucking chest, okay? Hey, I loved working with you. I'm so happy that you're happy. And I would love to work with more people just like you. I I am accepting new clients. Do you know anyone who might be a good match? Do you hear the difference in my like conviction, my voice, like the way that I'm, where do you keep going, Nikki? She's vanished into the abyss. I'm here by myself. I'm going to keep going though, even though Nikki is vanished. Yeah, just like speaking from a place of confidence and speaking in an empowered manner. Say it with conviction, speak into it with your full chest. It really makes the world of a difference when you can be clear in what you're asking for. And honestly, it mirrors respect back from your client when you like you're like, "Hey, dude, like I'm a I'm a human, I'm a business owner. I lo- I love working with you. Who else do you know?" And when they tell you that they might know someone because This is the worst case. You say it with your full chest and they're like, I'm going to have to think about that. I don't know. Best case, which is like not a big deal, really, right? Best case is they're like, yeah, I do know someone. And you ask them to make that connection. Do you mind putting us in a three-way email or text? Um, I do have a template, if that's helpful for you. If, If you're, or like with your friend's consent, would you mind connecting us in a text message or email thread? Bada bing, bada boom. I don't know if I should keep going by myself or not. Because I don't even know how to. Uh, I I went on while you were gone, so okay. let me give you a quick recap. Um, so I I then spoke into like after saying it with confidence, asking for it. Um, best case scenario is that they do know someone. And well, then I actually uh, correct. I actually corrected you, but then I got kicked off. You said you said, "Do you know anybody?" And it's like, who do no. you know? Who do you know? Yeah. Oh. Okay, maybe yeah, you I, said, do you know anyone? Oh. Yeah, and I was like, no. No, 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 no. Who do you know is the way that I always say it. Um, and then worst case is they're like, I don't know anyone, right? Which again is not the biggest deal, but not really. Not the case. Or the, I know, have to think about it. Uh, you don't know humans? That's yeah. cool. Um, but best case is that they they do know somebody who's a great match or multiple people. And then that's where you planned, right? With your friend, you know, with your friend's permission and consent, would you, because to me, like, you don't want to be paired into a three-way message unless you are like at least spoken to. That's, that's my kind of, that's my view on that. Um, with your friend's consent, would you connect us via text and like a three-way text or um, a three-way email? I actually have a, like a template you can use if you don't know how to, how to make a connection like that. And then you share, you can share one with them. Yeah. I say personally, like I understand the consent thing, but I'm just like, I just go for the three way. Connect us. Yeah, just connect us. Um, Because, well, other people in business do it to me all the time. Like, hey, Nikki, I just wanted to connect you with my friend. Da, 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 da. So, but people in service industries are a little bit more hesitant to do it. But yeah, it, it wouldn't hurt for the person to be like, hey, just so you know, I'm going to like set you up on a three way text with someone. But right. 
<laughs> it might be an innate thing that they do. You might not have to tell them to ask their friend for consent. They probably will. <laughs> so, so if you, so if you were to ask all of your happy clients for referrals, I can guarantee you. Well, I can't guarantee it, but it is highly likely, just based on actual evidence, that you will increase your business by thirty percent. If you were to skillfully ask, don't do it in the little shrimp way. The little shrimp way. No, be a beast. <laughs> Just say it. Just ask for it. Yeah. I mean, I think you'll become infinitely more powerful as a human when you overcome your fear of people saying no to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, without a doubt. I'm like, yeah, say no to me. It's fine. I'll recover from this. You grow stronger and stronger every no. Every yeah. no. <laughs> it's like it. Yeah, it feels devastating, but it's not the biggest deal. We move on. Anyway, moral of the story, ask your freaking clients for referrals, all of them. If I need to remind you 45 times to do that, I'm going to remind you 45 times to do it because you will do it once or twice and then you'll forget and you'll fall back into your own old ways and it's a whole mess. Let's just stop doing that. And then secondly, I would love if you actually prompted people to write reviews and started collecting that social proof because... People need to know that you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. There needs to be proof. Mm -hmm. Provide Trust. that. Yep. That's and right. it will really enhance your business and help grow it. Now, thank you for listening. This um, was so, so It was funny. chaotic, but <laughs> I have to, I have to burp. Oh my God. Hold on. <laughs> uh, what? is happening this is just like my this is just my real personality so. i know this has been like such a fever dream this whole episode yeah but i also so what i want you to do is leave a review a nice one <laughs> please like like and subscribe obviously if you are a hairstylist who wants to be certified in slice strands you probably should do it because it's you know i mean Pretty much no it's, reason not to. Yeah, it's really good. And if you are a stylist or any service business owner that needs a little bit of help, you can also, there's also going to be a link for you to get some more info, get on a call, do your thing. Doesn't matter. But you. Should, but I just, I feel strongly about it. I have one Let's more thing to say. What? Who do you know? Listeners, who do you know that would benefit from listening to this? Oh, podcast? good one. I, I see what you did. Would you would you send the link their way? Who do you know? I'm sure they all know a lot of people. Let's spread the good word, my friend. That, that, that's a little <laughs> bit of like a, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> let's spread a little, the word. A little, a little yeah, churchy. A little okay. churchy. Um, but yeah, spread the words. Share this podcast. Um, tag us if you're listening. Aha, uh -huh, another thing. If you're listening, share on your story and tag us and we'll share it to our pages as well. Yeah, not always, but sometimes I, I will. I'm okay, like, but tag Slay Squad Consulting. And yeah, yeah, I don't want to like overdo it with the stories. You know what I okay, mean? I'm okay. Tag Slay Squad Consulting and Jackie. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Slice Squad Spills. If you're enjoying the show, please subscribe, leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback is going to help us improve and attracts more listeners to the show. Please share with your fellow time slicers. And hey, if you're ready to optimize your time and double your income, we've got you covered.